Welcome back, folks, to Let's Replay Albion. And when last we left off, it is indeed too dangerous to rest here. Because for some reason, beneath the uh, drinking and meeting area in Kurnos is a massive dungeon filled with monsters and traps. That tends not to be a normal thing, so I'm starting to think that there might be something off with this area. And I'd indeed be right. Also, this is not one encounter, but two encounters that are one after another. And so we need to be very, very careful and focus on this one Rinri because we want to uh, defeat this one so that the other ones will run away. Because the, uh, the enemies that we will be encountering uh, afterwards, we want to have as much health as possible. And there's probably not just three of them. No, there in fact is six, but we can deal with six of them. We're just going to uh, split our attacks here and uh, let the people who are quite good at melee deal with this. In fact, Melthus is also probably quite good at melee at this point, so we'll uh, let Melthus have a try. There we go. This is probably a terrible mistake, as while he has the, uh, the strength to do it now, he probably doesn't have the uh, attack power. But if we move uh, Thunag up as well, that should probably help. Then again, they might all die horribly before that... Okay, that may have been a mistake, moving Malthus up. Even though he has the uh, strength to do so, he doesn't have the uh, armor to be able to resist all those attacks. So we'll just uh, use one of those healing potions that we found. Seems like a good idea. There we go. Excellent. That's another one dealt with, and another one dealt with, and... Is that all of them? I think that might be all of them, with the exception of this one, this solitary one that we can uh, quite easily deal with. There we go. Excellent. Rainer is level 17 and still only has one attack around. What's in here? It's locked. Hmm. Pretty sure we could pick this if we, uh... There we go. Ah! The speed amulet. The speed amulet does exactly what you think it does, in that it will uh, dramatically improve the uh, speed statistic of anybody who's currently using it. It's about to say holding it, but using it as the specific uh, term. Also, Asura is currently not using a uh, an amulet of any kind. She currently has 59 out of 99 speed stat. Now she has 89 out of 99 speed stat, which means that she can always pretty much go first, which is very, very important. It's very important because um, it means that um, she can always get off a spell if we need her to. Also, there should be a switch somewhere around here. A switch that will allow that to go off, and uh, there it is. What we need to do is we need to... Um, do something very specific with opening up this area, because there's that area that we want to uh, open up. We don't want to open up any other areas, but that area is kind of important. And by uh, using these switches, we can uh, get fireballs to fire off. There we go. We also want to be very careful about standing in particular locations, because that will keep moving it. And that is very important that we do so. Also, this is a very long-winded way of uh, locking somewhere up. I thought it might be a better idea, you know, just to uh, seed it off with, say, a door. Or one of those hidden walls that we've seen before. But no, this is a very, very long-winded uh, puzzle involving uh, fireballs. We want this lined up pretty much exactly. And that is not exact, is it? No, that's far from exact. I think we need to use it an additional twice. And we can only uh, have it active when there's a, um, when there isn't a fireball moving across the uh, screen. A very slow moving fireball, I might add. Is it now level? I don't think it is yet. Yeah, we need to move it one more time. One more time. Alright, let's, uh, use this. There we go. Excellent. And then we use the other one. Also, don't run into the fireball. It's generally a bad idea. Also, there is a switch there that um, we need to be uh, careful of. All right, there are enemies apparently somewhere nearby. And there's also this switch here that we are now going to use. I don't know what this one does. Does it bounce it back off? It does. You can see there, it bounces it back off and then it will bounce into here which destroys that piece of wall. 
And that is what we most certainly wanted to have happen, because this area has some very nice stuff. However, it is most certainly guarded by quite a nasty combination of enemies. I mean, this is really nasty. However, Drer is, um, maybe fast, but Syra is now a lot faster. Syra can pretty much always get off her attacks if she needs to. So we'll just have some uh, focused fire here like this, and uh, we'll see just how effective she is. Like this. Pretty much just going first, which is really, really good. They do have a uh, melee attack, which is not great, but um, I'm pretty sure that we'll be all right. We first need to just get these Rinri to run away. There we go, one hit, two, oh, they're already starting to flee. That is pretty good. It might actually be when they just sustain a fair bit of damage, which would be nice, but I'm not so optimistic. Goodbye, Rinri! It's a good thing that you run away. Imagine if there was a Rinri 2 that didn't run away. Now that would have been surprising, but I don't remember if there are Rinri 2, or if there are in fact Brog 2. Also, we don't want those rocks. We really don't want those rocks. In here is this um, chest, and this chest is really good. That is a Danu's Collar. It can only be used by a Druid. And so that means it can only be used by Melthus. And there is a good reason why it can only be used by Melthus, because it is a really, really good item, if memory serves. We're just going to see how good. We'll have to remove this, unfortunately. But uh, we'll put this on. Yeah, that luck stat there. The luck stat there went uh, from 5 all the way to uh, 30 and also improved his health drastically and his um, mana pool ridiculously so. So I think it's now time to uh, switch over this power amulet to Thunag here, just so that he has a ridiculous amount of strength. Because why not? He's actually not too bad at close combat, so it's not a bad thing to have. Also, I don't think there's, ooh, actually I, that's not true, there is something over here. A protection amulet! Oh, now that is nice! That is really nice! We have an absolutely large amount of things here. And we'll just put this on uh, Rainer here, and now he has 35 um, protection, which means now we can move him from uh, to a different point. We can actually move him very, very close to the uh, front line, just for the moment, because... Uh, why not? He's pretty much um, prepared for that now. He's not got the uh, attack stats to back it up, but that's the only place he's really good at at the moment because he's kind of lost the ability to uh, do anything else. There's not much more actually to this dungeon and we're going to rest now because we really need to. Also, look at that sheer amount of uh, stat gain that we have there. It's a ridiculous amount on Melthus's part. He has 105 spell points now. Fireballs forever, pretty much. Which is really, really good. Alright, carefully does it, because there's one more area we need to go into, and it's over here. And we need to be very, very careful with it. We'll just uh, use this there. There's a very, very small amount of... Uh, areas with uh, small amounts of loot and we need to watch out for those spinners because those spinners are rather nasty. The more we avoid them, the easier this will be. Also, that really sounds like a fireball of some variety. And there is a single Rinri. Hello, how are you? You're going to die absolutely horribly and I mean absolutely horribly. There we go. You will perish. Yep, and there you perished. And now we want to go and just uh, look around all these areas and try our best not to uh, not to fall into that fireball. I think it's going up here. Yes, it is. Let's uh, avoid that, shall we? And see where it goes. Is it going to follow us or is it going to... Uh, it's going to bounce this way. No, it is not. That is good. I think all of these things really don't have that much that we uh, need to examine, so we're just going to uh, ignore them and move on. There also appears to be a few more Rinri in here, and by a few I mean there might only be 
one more. But it is worth uh, having a look around and grabbing everything that we can. There we go, there's also an area just down here that appears to have nothing in it. Which is alright, because we've pretty much explored everywhere that we can here. I wonder if it counts the uh, fireball as an enemy. That is interesting if it- oh! Oops, accidentally walked into one of those. That's uh, really not good. Let's uh, back up here and move on. Because that was a little silly. We want to instead head north here, and we want to avoid the, um, the best way to do that is to head, uh, this way, and then to head, we need to be very careful as to where that fireball is going. No, the fireball is, uh, not going, uh, the way we are. A good way to find out if, um, there's any spinners is to have a look at where there are trash piles. There are definitely not spinners on the trash piles. Okay. Now we want to go and find that document that's down there, because we really want that. In fact, that is a critical plot item. And there might in fact be an area that we need to uh, look at down here as well. At least I think, ah, there is. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Any enemies at all? There's nothing here yet. But there is a uh, trash pile and a big pile of nothing there. What's here? Just a small amount of gold, that's fine. And here, ooh! Ah, just lots of brogs. We can deal with lots and lots of brogs. There we go, we'll just have uh, you all focus there, you can uh, do that, and you can use that lightning strike spell. Because why not? And you might as well practice your banished demon spell. There we go. One dealt with, and of course that didn't work, but I wasn't expecting it to. They do hurt if they manage to hit the correct target. They do hurt. Alright. And now we'll have you uh, use a fireball there to finish that one off, and another lightning strike here to hit that one. There we go, these should all just start dying pretty soon. That one certainly died. There we go. Another one dealt with. And that one dealt with. There are not many left that are right next to us, but that one being there is kind of bad. Because we really want um, that one not to be there anymore, so that we can uh, focus our attacks elsewhere. But at the moment, we're kind of stuck. So we're just going to have to uh, start using these uh, ranged attacks instead. There we go. And both of them missed, but that one is now dead, which is good. There's only two left, and there's soon going to be a lot less than two, that's for sure. There's going to be a lot less than two. There's probably going to be precisely zero. There we go. There's one, and there's none. And that is uh, the last encounter, I think, for a while, where we're just going to be leaving lots of rocks behind. Because I have no desire to pick up rocks. And there appears to be nothing in here of any use save that treasure chest that we're going to open. There is a sickness and an insanity antidote, which are quite nice, and a few rations, which we will take. And now it's time to go and take that item that we uh, came down here for, that uh, document part. We need to find more of that document though. That is only one piece and we need to find more pieces of it. And so we'll go back in here and grab this very important item. There we go. And now we're going to read it. The other part of the document is missing. Ah, well that's not good. We're most certainly going to need that other part of the document though. And when we go and find that, we'll pretty much know what's going on here. But for now, we have one thing we need to do that we've sort of been distracted from. And that is that we're going to go and actually have a conversation with the leader of Kurnos. Because he is here, and he will say hello to us if we go and uh, speak to him. So without further ado, we shall go and do that. He is down here. In the, that door there. So we'll go and uh, say hello. Where are you? down here, through here, I think. Yes, yes you are. And now I think we've, uh, that door may be open again, so it's like we were never there. 
Except we were here, and we did kind of steal everything. Which is really not good. And in here is indeed the man that we're looking for, in a small area that is uh, not a dungeon, but instead a very nice place to live indeed. And if you give me one moment, I'll be right back. And we are back. Apologies for the interruption there. Let us talk to the leader of Kurnos. Don't you see that I'm busy? I hate being interrupted when I'm preparing one of my speeches. So what do you want? What is your profession? I don't want to boast, but I'm the most respected and competent magician in the area. For many years I've been concerned with religious theories. Why am I telling you this? You obviously do not have the scientific knowledge needed to comprehend such information. Also, ask me how humble I am. Well, how humble are you? I'm exceptionally humble. So humble! In fact, I'm the most humble magician in the area. Let's talk about Kurnos. Now, you'll probably notice that we have a very traditional lifestyle here. This is good for us, since we can concentrate on our religion and the important aspects of life. And let's talk about speeches. From time to time, I must improve the general knowledge of the inhabitants of Kurnos. To do this, I arrange a kind of religious service. I guess using that word should allow you to understand. This way, my tribal brothers have already attained great knowledge. They are thankful for this, and rightly so, if you ask me. I have an extremely important position here, and I only mean well for Kurnos and its inhabitants. I give meaning to their lives. Now they have something to live for, and believe me, that is crucial. Let's talk about your beliefs. I don't think you'll be able to understand the principles of our entire religion in just a few minutes. Therefore, I will just outline it. Leadership by our Supreme Lord, and the continuous improvement of our culture, are the most important parts of our religion. And what do you know about the religion itself? Religion is very important to us. Indeed it is. It's been nice talking to you. Farewell. Don't forget to tell everyone how humble I am! We could also show him this document part here. It is something we can do, and it does provoke a bit of a silly, um, conversation start when we talk to him again. You again? Listen. I am really a very sociable fellow, but I do not have time to deal with every stranger who is traveling through, especially when I'm preparing a speech. So if you have something to say to me, make it brief. What do you know about this item? This is a scrap of a document. Why should it concern me? What do you want with it? It is useless without the other part. He is quite right there. Farewell. And we have no need to stay in Kurnos at all anymore. Also, I just realized that all this time, we've had a bow and 50 arrows that we could have had uh, Reyna using. Oops. Oh well, he did just fine with the uh, shield and sword once the, uh, the bolt thrower broke. It does sort of imply that we really need to make sure that Reyna has backup weapons, but uh, they all have backup weapons if they have uh, ranged equipment, which is quite nice. So we're just going to uh, head down here. We're not going to head down that vine, as I think that vine leads to a uh, Shemalanar. So instead, we're just going to quickly pop over to Belovano, where we can go and get various things fixed up, and a few things sold, because uh, it's a good idea to do so. Alright, we'll just uh, head down and uh, move further back to Belovano. And then, we'll return to Shemalanar. And by return, I mean head there, because we've never been to Shemalanar. I mean, I've been to Shemalanar in previous playthroughs, but not in this one. We still have time to do things we need to. We're uh, not in an urgent rush just yet. And we uh, can't do anything in particular except go and uh, see what we can do. We haven't yet triggered all these enemies respawning, which is quite nice, because I don't want all these enemies to respawn. Also, we're going to just rest here, because uh, we're not going to be able to do anything in any of the stores with the time that it was. There we go. So, uh, over here we go. Down here, and into this corner where the armor smith is, because uh, we need to sell things to the armor smith first. <laughs> We have a few random things that really, uh, we don't need anymore. Like, for instance, we have a, uh, who has them? Is it you that has them? There you are, you have a, uh, round shield that we don't need. And we also have a studded cap that we don't need. And we also have a, uh, a pair of boots, I think, that we don't need. Who has the boots? You have the boots, there we go. Excellent. And now we'll leave, because we don't need to do anything else there whatsoever. 
And so we'll head uh, over to the Weaponsmith now, who is uh, over here. Don't go to the Weaponsmith as often as I do the uh, General Store, but that's to be expected. There we go. Always shuts the door. There we go. And now we'll head through and uh, we'll get a few, we'll get some things repaired. Seems like a good idea because we really want uh, this item repaired. How much? Ooh, that is expensive, but it's worth it. It's very much worth it because uh, we need that weapon. We need that weapon. Also, okay, I completely forgot that um, you can have shields equipped if you don't have ammunition ready. Which is uh, quite neat. Also, we did use a lot of bolts. And I mean a lot of bolts. So we could actually uh, get a few more. Like, maybe 50 more. Seems like a good plan. Just to replenish the uh, stockpile that we have. There we go. Much better. We do want to uh, sell a few things to make up for what we uh, lost there. And we also want to pass over those uh, seeds at some point to uh, Syrah. There is a sword that we can get rid of, which is good, and there is a bow that we can get rid of. You actually don't have room for that, really. Oh, I thought you'd have room, but no, apparently not. And so we'll just, uh, we have a lot of crystal daggers, I've just realized. We'll actually go and uh, pass off the bow to uh, the person up here, the general store. I think that seems like a pretty good idea. It's always nice just to pop in here and occasionally, uh, you know, stockpile and see what you can get. Uh, you have bows, and that is important because we want to sell all of these things to you. These 50 arrows, we can't get very much for them. And this bow, we can get a bit for that. It doesn't make up for the, um, the damage to the uh, bolt thrower. But that's okay because uh, we most certainly needed that bolt thrower. Also, it was very expensive to fix but it was most certainly worth it. And so, when we come back, folks, we will uh, go to Shramalanar, because we most certainly need to go to Shramalanar. It's a very important place to go and visit. And so, when we come back, we'll be at Kurnos, going off to Shramalanar. And hopefully everything will be fine there. It, it doesn't seem like everything is fine. There is something quite wrong in this region that we are going to have to get involved in because the plot demands it. So, well, catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.